This is the news around the globe. Venezuela President Maduro survives assassination attempt. Venezuela President Nicolas Maduro escaped death yesterday as a drone loaded with explosives detonated near a military event where he was given a speech. Seven people were wounded on Saturday in the apparent attack, which came as Maduro celebrated National Guard's 81st anniversaries in the capital, Caracas. Maduro, in a statement, described the incident as an assassination attack, adding that everything points to a right-wing plot that an initial investigation suggested was linked to Colombia and the United States of Florida, where many Venezuelan exiles live. Several perpetrators were caught, he said, without elaborating. A little-known group called the National Movement of Soldiers in T-shirt claimed responsibility for the attack. In a series of posts on social media, the group said it planned to fly two drones, but snipers shot them down. Attorney General Tariq William Saab said the attempted assassination targeted not just Maduro, but rather the military's entire high command on stage with the president. Prosecutors have already launched their investigation and obtained critical details from the suspect in custody. North Atlantic Treaty Organization soldiers killed in Afghan suicide bombing. A suicide bomber has killed three NATO foreign soldiers in an attack in eastern Afghanistan. The victims, whose nationalities have not been disclosed, were on a return foot patrol alongside Afghan forces, NATO officials said in a statement. A U.S. soldier and two Afghan soldiers were wounded in the attack in Karikar, the capital of Pawan province, at 6 o'clock local time. Taliban militants have claimed they carried out the bombing. U.S. Army General John said their sacrifice will endure in both our hearts and history and forever strengthen our resolve. Dozens of students injured in Bangladesh road safety protests. Dozens of people have been injured in Bangladesh's capital after student protests over road safety turned violent, marking a major escalation on the seventh day of unrest. According to reports, police on Saturday fired rubber bullets at student protesters in Dakar. They also fired tear gas and used buttons to disperse hundreds of young people angry over the traffic death of two fellow students on Sunday. Emergency ward doctor Abdul told newsmen they had treated more than 115 injured students, some of whom had injuries consistent with rubber bullets. Swedish Crown Jewels Speedboat Thieves Steal Priceless Treasures Police in Sweden have launched a manhunt after thieves swiped some of the country's crown jewels from a cathedral and escaped by speedboats. Two priceless crowns and an orb belonging to 17th century king and queen were taken near Stockholm. Witnesses say they saw two men running from the cathedral, which was open to the public and hosting a lunch fair. They were seen motoring off into Lake Malarin and have not been seen since. Police have launched a huge search operation but currently have no suspects. No one was hurt during the burglary, but church staff were shaken. Nigerian president elected ECOWAS chairman. Nigerian president Mohamed Buhari was Tuesday in Lome, Togo, elected the new chairman of the Authority of Heads of State and Government of the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS. The president's election was one of the high points of the 53rd session of the Authority of Head of State and Government of ECOWAS, which held in Ethogolis capital. In his acceptance remarks, the Nigerian leader who commended his colleagues for his election noted that he did not offer himself for the post, but they refused to take no for answers. 
He, however, told his fellow leaders that he was truly humbled and pledged to serve and work with all to deliver on peace, security, good governance and socio-economic development of the sub-Saharan region and take the organization to greater heights. President Buhari also commended his immediate predecessor and president of Togo for successfully hosting two important meetings of the Joint Economic Community of Central African States, ECCAS, and ECOWAS, as well as the, as well as the 53rd Ordinary Session of the Authority of Head of State and Government of ECOWAS. The Nigerian Air Force deploys jets to combat bandits. The Nigerian Air Force NAF has deployed fighter aircraft, helicopter gunships and intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance to combat bandits in Zamfara State and environs. The Air Force said it has deployed additional troops along with necessary ground support equipment and logistics facilities to Katsina and Gazoo in support of anti armed banditry operations in the Northwest. Air Vice Marshal Olato Kumba Desoya, NEF Director of Public Relations and Information, disclosed this in a statement on Tuesday in Abuja. According to Desoya, the deployment of air assists was in compliance with the directives of President Mohamed Buhari. Adesoya said that the intensive air operation is aimed at seeking out pursuing and destroying elements engaged in banditry in Zamfara State and environs. He said that firefighter aircraft, helicopter gunships as well as intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, ISR platforms alongside necessary equipment and personnel had been deployed for conduct of Operation Diran Mikia. The NAF spokesman said there will be no hiding place for armed bandits as the NAF would be employing all the means at its disposal to detect the movement and locations of the armed bandits. Russian helicopter crashes kills 18 persons in Siberia. 18 people have died in Russian helicopter crash in northwestern Siberia. Russia's emergency ministry said the MI-8 went down 10.20 local time, about 180 kilometers from the town of Igaka in Gronanyak territory. All those on board, three crew members and 15 passengers were killed. The helicopter was reportedly taking workers to an oil station. An investigation into the crash is underway. Initial assessments have suggested that the aircraft propeller blades struck cargo being carried by another helicopter just after takeoff. North Korea continues work on nuclear program. United Nations says North Korea has continued to develop its nuclear program and is violating international sanctions by transferring weapons and fuel. By turning off tracking systems on ships, the North Asian nation was able to carry out illicit ship-to-ship -ship petroleum transfers, an activity that has increased in scale and sophistication. The confidential report by a panel of independent experts was submitted to the UN Security Council. North Korea has so far not commented on the document's findings. President Trump met North Korea's Kim Jong-un in Singapore in June, and the two leaders then pledged to work towards denuclearization without specifying exactly what this would look like. Pyongyang is currently under a range of international and U.S. sanctions over its nuclear program and missile tests. Five cave boys return home after novice monkhood. Most of the Thai boys rescued from a flooded cave have returned home after spending time in Buddhist monastery as novice monks. Eleven of the Wild Bow's youth football team were ordained novices in memory of a diver who died during their rescue. Their 25-year-old coach, who has received monks' orders, will stay on for three months. One of the boys did not participate as he is a Christian. The group were trapped for more than two weeks before a dramatic rescue. 
the novice monks aged between 11 to 17 left the temple in northern Thailand's Mai Sai district after spending nine days living in a monastery, a tradition for males in Thailand who experience adversity. According to reports, the experience was seen as a spiritual cleansing for the group and to fulfill the promise by the families to remember ex navy seal diver Saman Gunan, who died during the rescue operation. The length of time spent meditating, praying and cleaning their temple nine days is a note to a fine lucky number. Opposition leader Moise Katumbi barred from entering the Democratic Republic of Congo. Aspiring presidential candidates have until August 8 to submit applications and need to physically be in the Democratic Republic of Congo to do so. Operation leader Moise Katumbi has lashed out of government of the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, after being barred from entering the country where he is expected to lodge his papers to participate in December's long-delayed presidential election. The wealthy businessman who has been living in self-imposed ESO since 2016 had originally planned to fly from South Africa to Lombombashi, the capital of Katanga province. But the city's mayor said on Thursday that Katumbi was refused entry while the public prosecutor's office said the opposition leader had been charged with harming the state's domestic and internal security and would be immediately arrested if he returned. Pope Francis declares death penalty is inadmissible. Pope Francis has declared that the death penalty is never admissible and that the Catholic Church will continue to work towards abolition around the world, the Vatican formally announced Thursday. The change which has been added to the Catechism of the Catholic Church makes official a position that the Pope has articulated since he became pontiff. The church now teaches that the death penalty is inadmissible because it is an attack on the inviolability and dignity of the person and states that it will work with determination towards its abolition worldwide, the Vatican added. The declaration by Pope Francis, who is spiritual leader to the world's 1.2 billion Catholics, may have particular resonance in the United States, where capital punishment remains legal in 31 states and as a federal punishment. Australian climate rescued after a week on Frozen Mountain. Terry Hart, a 29-year-old Australian climber who was trapped for a week on a freezing New Zealand mountain, was rescued on Friday after a remarkable fit of survival in a ferocious storm. He was located on Thursday after a long and drawn-out search operation when a rescue helicopter spotted him waving from a slope on South Island's Mount Aspirin. Rescuers from New Zealand's National Search and Rescue Organization, RCCNZ, said there were grave concerns for Hart's safety after he triggered his emergency vehicle on Monday, the day he was supposed to come off the mountain. An emergency team finally managed to reach Hart late Thursday, but wind, snow and cloud conditions prevented a rescue until a weather window opened, allowing rescuers to conduct a snatch-and-grab operation. Record temperatures could hit Spain and Portugal. Forecasters have warned of potentially record-breaking temperatures in Spain and Portugal this week, as much of Europe swelters in a heat wave that has left some farmers suffering drought conditions. The Portuguese capital Lisbon could see a high of 41 Celsius on Saturday, according to reports. Its average temperature is 28 Celsius for this time of the year. Vocationists have been warned to take precautions against extreme temperatures as the heat wave coincides with the peak holiday season in Europe. UN envoy confirms first Yemen peace talks in two years. The United Nations Special Envoy for Yemen Martin Griffiths 
has told the Security Council that he would convene the country's first talk in two years to secure peace between Saudi backed forces and Houthi rebels. Martin said the time was long past for negotiations to resume, adding he would bring the parties together on 6 September in Geneva. The scale of timing of the Saudi airstrike has been seen by some diplomats either as an attempt to sabotage the Griffiths' plan or a body signal that the Saudis were not willing to conciliate. Claims of violence as Israel deports crew of Gaza aid vessel. Activists who attempted to sail a fishing boat carrying aid to Gaza but intercepted by the Israeli Navy have complained of violence during a boarding operation. Israel held the 20 foreigners and the boat after they arrived several dozen miles off the coast of Gaza on Sunday and were in the process of deporting the crew, the group said. Most of those on board al Auda, which means the return in Arabic, were held in prison while two Israelis on the vessel were released on bail. The military said it forces used proportional force in order to constrain the propagators on board the ship. It did not say how many activists it had deported or if any remained in custody. Japanese MP calls lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender community unproductive. Japanese governing party has belatedly distanced itself from an MP who described members of the LGBT community as unproductive because they cannot have children. Mio Sugita, a low house member of the Liberal Democratic Party, LDP, sparked widespread criticisms after she challenged the use of taxpayers' money to support same-sex marriages in a magazine article published last month. Sugita wrote that same-sex couples don't produce children. In other words, they lack productivity and therefore did not contribute to the prosperity of the nation. The party said it was committed to supporting the rights of sexual minorities. Abu told reporters it was only natural to aim to create a society where human rights are respected and diversity is cherished. Lynchburg floods. Flooding dove sparks evacuation in the U.S. city. Evacuation orders have been used in parts of Lynchburg, Virginia, though the fears a dam may fail amid flooding. The College Lake Dam exceeded in capacity after rainfall. The city of Lynchburg is a closer settlement downstream of the structure. The National Water Service says if the dam fails completely, 17 feet of water could flood in in seven minutes. Lynchburg has a population of about 80,000 and lies in the Blue Ridge Mountains. Officials have warned residents not to drive down flooded streets, adding that the flood water may contain debris. A number of people whose homes could be at risk have been evacuated to nearby schools along with their pets, while 124 households have been urged to evacuate. Zimbabwe newly elected president Mungawa calls for unity. Zimbabwe newly elected president Emerson Nangawa says he will be a leader of all Zimbabweans in a call for unity after rows broke out over his election victory. The president appealed for peace and promised an independent investigation into the military after six people were killed in post-election violence. However, the opposition leader Nelson Kamisa has described the president's victory as a coup against the people's will. In the meantime, speaking at a press conference, President Mnangawa said the Kamisa would have a crucial role to play in Zimbabwe's president and its unfolding future. Trump imposes duty on Rwanda clothes. The United States has formally locked up apparel products from Rwanda after the East African nation banned imports of second-hand clothes and shoes. President Trump has issued a proclamation suspending duty-free treatment for all clothing from Rwanda just six months after he met President Paul Kagame and called him a friend. Rwandan-made apparel will no longer enter the lucrative American markets. 
The U.S. government says Rwanda has failed to upload eligibility criteria for the African Growth and Opportunity Act passed 18 years ago to allow more African products in the U.S. In 2016, Kenya, Tanzania and Rwanda agreed to ban used clothing and footwear by 2019 to protect local textile industries. Acquitted war crime suspect returned to DR Congo. Former rebel leader Jean Pierre Bemba has arrived in the Democratic Republic of Congo after he was acquitted for war crimes by the International Criminal Court, ICC. Mr. Bemba has vowed to Congress presidential elections due in December. He was arrested in Belgium in 2008 and fought a decade-long battle at the ICC to clear his name. Mr. Bemba's supporters were in the airport in the capital, Kinshasa, to welcome him. Autistic patients require special care, says experts. Children with autism spectrum disorder are entitled to live in a normal and healthy lifestyle. In this special report, High Impact Television's correspondent, Pisa Deniro, brings us the report. The Autism Spectrum Disorder, ASD, generally referred to as autism, is described as a complex neurobehavioral condition that includes impairment in social interaction, developmental language and communication skills, combined with rigid repetitive behaviors. The ASD is classified into three. They are the pervasive developmental disorder, Asperger's syndrome, and the autistic disorder. It is a common belief that people who are on the autism spectrum disorder are not smart, neither are they intelligent academically or socially. In some parts of Africa, autistic people are seen as a curse to their families. In most cases, they are seen as some form of nemesis to parents who had committed atrocities. This belief makes such parents see themselves as the cause of their child's disorder, leading to the killing of such child to appease their deities. However, research has shown that there is no spiritual undertone to having children with the disorder. It has also been proven that autistic children perform excellently in any area they pick interest in, if proper attention is given to their developmental process. A mental health officer at the Neuropsychiatric Hospital, Aru, Abelkuta, Ogun State, Mr. Okbayemi Kazin, sheds more light on the disorder. From research and from uh, bioanalysis, we have realized that every child that, so, uh, that, that suffers from autism has a form of genetic mutation. That is, the gene mutates and becomes something that is totally different from what is expected to be. This mutation has been seen in all of them. So that has, that has been the main link between it. But aside that, we have suspected factors. But there are environmental and suspected factors, like exposure to chemical substances in the environment, physical uh, substances like uh, asbestos, radiations. So exposure to things like that, toxic waste. If you look at our country, for instance, look at the lagoon. A lot of toxic waste have been into a heat. There are fishes eating those toxic waste. We are also eating those fishes. The catfish you are eating has a lot of mercury that has been absorbed from that water. This is one of the this is one of the chemical elements that has been suspected to cause this mutation. That among many others. Those of us that have uh, the whole cathode ray tube emitting television. That's why we advise women don't stay in front of this. When you are pregnant, don't do too many X-ray or don't do X-ray. These are radiations that can cause mutations. Our mass, telecommunication mass, a lot of them are actually unsafe for the environment. In as much as we cannot directly say this is the cause, but they have been suspected to be responsible. Yes, radiations. And there are some drugs that can cause this. Drugs like um, regular drugs that you and I use, but they are taken without prescription. That's why when you are pregnant, you have to be very careful with the kind of drug you take. 
Not only that, some women who abuse some forms of drugs can also have children coming down with autism. People take cannabis while pregnant, alcohol, women while pregnant, codeine and the likes. These are things that can induce this condition. For parents who have um, children living with autism or any form of the conditions in autistic person disorder, one of the things you should realize is that you don't force them to do things. You technically change what you feel is necessary for you to change in them. There are some things you have to permit as long as it is not posing a risk to those children and to you. You should try and understand them. Let them learn at their own pace. If they will need an educational counsellor, let them see one. But most importantly, let them see mental health counsellors because that's their field. There are a lot of mental health counsellors that specialize in adolescent, child and adolescent uh, neurological problems. They know how to do it. We have speech therapists that can help them to develop their ability to speak and listen to you. Some of them can actually become the genius that will be so good in some things that you and I cannot do because they are high Q, because of their high Q. But if the learning disability is so significant and marked to the point that the child cannot cope with education, there are vocations. And that's where our occupational therapists come in and our social workers. They look at the environment and see how well they can blend that individual to the environment. There are children who are autistic that work in factories, building vehicles that you and I are driving. They are getting paid, they are living their life, they get married, they have children. Only whoever will be around them must understand their conditions. They say some things are blessings in disguise, it's if only you know. And that's the last part of the quote. If you have a child that is autistic, you should look at the genius that has come from you. A genius that can do something specially beyond the way every other person cannot do it. That genius in the child is what you should bring out. And when you do that, I tell you, you'll be a proud mother, father, or brother, or relative to that child. And I'm sure you'll be one of those who will be telling everybody, I am Mrs. or Mr. or Ms. so so so. My child or my brother is autistic and he can do this and that. It is interesting to note that legends like Michelangelo, Abraham Lincoln, Charles Darwin, Isaac Newton, Bill Gates, and Lionel Messi have displayed traits of the autistic spectrum disorder. These people have proven to the world that autistic people can find success if they are shown proper care and attention. Peace at any more reporting for High Impact Television. Surgeons' roles contribute to mortality rate, says reports. A toxic role between surgeons at a cardiac unit contributed to a higher mortality rate, according to a leaked document. The report into the unit at St. George's Hospital in London says the team was consumed by a dark force and patients were put at risk. The average mortality rate nationally is 2%, but the unit recorded 3.7%. The hospital said it was taking action and cardiac surgery at the unit was safe for patients. St. George's commissioned an external review of the department after an alert in April about lower than expected survival rates. Former National Health Service England Deputy Medical Director Mike Berwick took on the task and wrote the report. In it, he claimed internal scrutiny of the department was inadequate and the surgeons were split into two cramps exhibiting tribal-like activity. Professor Berwick said some felt there was a persistent toxic atmosphere and stated there was a dark force in the unit. Plastic food ports and trays are often unrecyclable, says councils. Most of the plastic food containers that household wash out after use in the recycling bin cannot actually be recycled, it has emerged. The mixture of plastics used in many yogurt ports ready meal trays and other containers limit the ability of councils to recycle them. The local government association says that only a third can be recycled. The rest get sent to landfill. Up to 80% of packaging could be made more recyclable, the industry said. 
the British Plastics Federation said companies are working to use more recyclable containers and call for a financial incentive of manufacturers to use more recyclable plastics. According to the LGA analysis, around 525,000 tons of plastic ports, tubes and trays are used by households in the UK every year. But only 169,000 tons of this waste is capable of being recycled. Medical researchers link air pollution to changes in heart structure. Medical researchers say air pollution is linked to changes in the structure of the heart of the sorts in an early stages of heart failure. The finding could help explain the increased number of deaths seen in areas with high level of dirty air. They also say that they found exposure in nitrogen dioxide and fine particulate matter known as PM2.5 and PM10 particles, which is linked to an increase in the size of two of the chambers of the heart, the left and the right ventricle. PM particles are commonly emitted by motor vehicles, among other sources. The authors add that similar changes can affect the performance of the heart and are often seen before heart failure takes hold. Plastics emit greenhouse gases, study reveals. A study has found on Wednesday that degrading plastics emit powerful greenhouse gases such as methane and ethylene and a previously unaccounted for source of these heat trapping pollutants. Plastic water bottles, shopping bags, industrial plastics and food containers were tested during the study. The most prolific emitter was polythene, which is used in shopping bags and is the most produced and discarded synthetic in the world, said reports. Researchers have not yet calculated the level of harmful greenhouse gases emitted by plastics in the environment. Plastic is already known to release harmful chemicals into water and soil. Greenhouse gases have risen to all-time ties threatening coastal communities worldwide. Cholera outbreak in Yemen, UNICEF warns. The UN Children's Agency is warning of another cholera outbreak in war-torn Yemen after airstrikes hit water facilities and other civilian infrastructure in the port city of Hodaide. UNICEF Executive Director Heranta Four said Wednesday that the airstrikes earlier this week damaged a sanitation facility and a station that supplies most of the city's water. She says such attack jeopardized effort to prevent another outbreak of cholera and acute watery diarrhea in Yemen. Yemen has been embroiled in a stalemated war pitting in Saudi-led coalition against Iran-baked rebels known as Houthis since March 2015. The war has damaged Yemen's infrastructure, crippled the health system and pushed the country to bring a famine. University of Ibadan renames Art Theater after Wole Shonika. The University of Ibadan on Tuesday renamed its Arts Theater after Nobel Laureate Professor Wole Shonika. The university also named the practical theater as Geoffrey Axworthy Studio. It was gathered that Geoffrey Axworthy was the founding director of the School of Drama of the University in 1962. Shenka was also the founding head when the school was transformed into a full department of theatre arts in 1970. Speaking at the unveiling of the theatre, the vice chancellor of the university, Professor Idowu Olainka, said that the event marked a landmark of history of the university. The vice chancellor said that two iconic figures had played significant roles in the development of the department and the growth of performing arts in the country. According to him, the quest to rename the theater after Shoinka received the approval of the Senate at its meeting in October 2017. 6% budgetary provision not adequate for education, Minister of State. 
Nigeria's Minister of State for Education, Professor Anthony Amuka, has said that education sector received only 6% of the budgetary allocation for education in the 2017 national budget. Aoka stated this on Wednesday at the 63rd National Council on Education Conference in Abuja. The minister said the provision of adequate funding for education sector was important for Nigerians to achieve its Education 2030 agenda. He said the task of funding education is a collective responsibility of all stakeholders, corporate and private organization, in order to meet the UNESCO Global Benchmark. In the 2017 Appropriation Act, 448.01 billion naira was allocated to education, representing about 6% of 7.3 trillion naira budget. In 2018, about 369.6 billion naira was appropriated. 492.34 billion naira in 2015, 443 billion naira in 2014, and 426.53 billion naira in 2013, all of which are still less adequate for the essential development of the education sector. Ministers said that with a population of over 170 million, the burden on education had become overwhelming on the three tiers of governments. Egypt's Pope Tawadros II quits Facebook. The head of the Coptic Orthodox Church in Egypt, Pope Tawadros II, has announced his intent to shut down his official Facebook page and make better use of his time. The Pope says time is the most precious gift God gives us daily, which we must use in a good way. Pope Tawadros II said he joined the social network in October 2009 although his Facebook page is still active at the moment. The church has also given all monks a month to shut down all their social network accounts and give their time solely to the monastic order. China launches bird drones for citizen surveillance. Over recent years, more than 30 Chinese military and government agencies have reportedly been seen using drones made to look like birds to surveil citizens in at least five provinces, according to South China Morning Post, according to reports. The program is reportedly codenamed Dove and run by Song Bianfeng, a professor at Northwestern Polytechnical University in Xi'an. Song was formerly a senior scientist on the Chengdu J-20, Asia's first fifth-generation stealth fight jet, according to reports. The bird-like drones will make the flapping wings of a real bird using a pair of crank rockers driven by an electric motor. Each drone has a high-definition camera, GPS antenna, flight control system, and a data link with satellite communication capability. Steve Harvey returns as 2018 Miss Universe host. Steve Harvey is set to return as a 2018 Miss Universe host. The Emmy Award winner will take the stage in Bangkok, Thailand, where the three-hour competition will take place in December 16. In 2015, 61 years old Harvey famously named the wrong winner during the pageant after initially announcing Miss Columbia as the night's big winner. Harvey revealed he had made an error in Miss Philippines. Pierre Alonso was, in fact, the winner. Along with Harvey, reigning Miss Universe Demi Lionel Peters from South Africa will also return this year to crown her successor. Jennifer Lopez to receive MTV's Michael Jackson Vanguard Award. The MTV Video Music Awards are a few weeks away, but one of the big winners of the night has already been announced. Jennifer Lopez will be presented the Michael Jackson Video Vanguard Award this year, MTV announced Tuesday. The network called Lopez one of the most iconic and influential multi-hyphenates across music, film, television, fashion, business and philanthropy in a press release. 
Jennifer Lopez is scheduled for a live performance during the August 20th event. Don Sylvester Record Label unveils new movie and record label. An entertainment company, Don Sylvester Records, has unveiled Don Sylvester Record Label in Lagos State, Southwest Nigeria. The production company also premiered Halima Abubakar's new movie titled Blood Battle. High Impact Television crew captured highlights of the event which took place in the city of Lagos. Chief Executive Officer Don Sylvester Productions, Sylvester Chinedu Unweke launches his new record label known as DSL Records recently in Lagos, Nigeria, signing a new artist into the record label. He also partnered with Halima Abubakar, a popular actress in the Nollywood industry, in the making of her own movie, Blood Battle. The event is graced with celebrities from the entertainment industry. Sylvester Chinedu, in a speech, mentioned that people should expect greatness in the entertainment industry as he is set to unveil new songs from the artist under his label and more movies from Don Sylvester Productions. Thank you for coming. I appreciate you all. We are here to unveil the DSL record and we are here to premiere the movie titled Blood Battle and we are here to sign artists. So I appreciate you all. Justin Timberlake's Spin the Wheel, now a series by Forks. Forks has given a series order to Spin the Wheel, a new game show from executive producer Justin Timberlake. Dax Shepard will host the series, which will feature contestants competing for large cash prizes in a game built around a massive, unpredictable wheel. This show is created by Timberlake and Andrew Glaspin, who serve alongside Rick Yeon and Johnny Wright as executive producers. It is described as pitting contestants against a colossal, spinning 40 feet wheel that holds incredible sums of cash prize in its rotation. Throughout the game, players will answer trivial questions. Each correct answer adds extreme amounts. Christopher Robin tackles Mission Impossible Fallout at box office. The United States box office weekend looks like a battle between Disney's Christopher Robin and Tom Cruise's Mission Impossible Fallout as both titles head for three-day totals around $300 million. Newcomer, the spy who dumped me, is targeting low double digits. Last weekend, the sixth installment of the Mission Impossible franchise opened with a series best $61.2 million. Fallout predecessor, Mission Impossible, Rogue Nation only dropped 48% in its second weekend. Should the latest chapter have a similar hold, the spy trailer could surpass Christopher Robin and take the number one slot. Patrick Stewart set to return to new Star Trek series. Patrick Stewart is boldly going where he has been before by reprising the Star Trek role of John Luke Picard. The character will feature in a new CBS All Access series chronicling his life after Star Trek The Next Generation. The actor announced the news in a surprise appearance at the annual Star Trek convention in Las Vegas on Saturday. His career spans almost six decades and includes the role of Professor Charles Xavier in the X-Men franchise. The 70-year-old played Picard in 178 episodes 
of the Sky Fight television series between 1987 and 1994 and in four feature films. Bikers Converge 2018 Bikers all over the world have converged in Abeokuta, Ogun State, Southwest Nigeria, to participate in annual Bikers Ride. This year's Bikers Converge 2018 featured different bikers and their display of riding skills. High Impact Television sport correspondent Daniel O'Shea has the details of the reports. The attendees did not hesitate to express their passion for biking. Initially it was a mode of transport, okay. but then it's a virus. Once it gets in your blood, you're hooked. You can't explain why you ride, just like you can't explain why you fly if you're a pilot. Sense of freedom, sense of power. For me, I don't think biking is a sport. Okay, for me, it's a way of life. Now, um, I'm more into adventure for biking. Okay. So it's, we have kind of we have different bikes, sport bikes, adventure bikes. I'm not into speed. I'm into discovering Nigeria, going outside the country, and all of that. I call it I call it passion. I call it hobby. It's something I do to clear my head. Mm. You know, so it's a nice thing. It's a nice feeling being on two wheels and uh, <laughs> going fast with. Uh, your sense intact. Talking about risks involved in biking and the precautions to take, participants had this to say. Everything in life is about risk, but I think uh, you decide to take it or leave it. So as for biking, I don't think there's much risk in it. Uh, people keep saying risk, 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 but I don't think there's much risk in it. You know, if you traveling, if you decide to take it slow, you get to your destination. If you want to decide to take it fast, you take, go to your destination. So it's a 50-50 thing, you know. So yeah. for risk, I don't think there is much risk on it. Okay. Uh, the only risk I would talk about is just our road, which uh, a biker always know where to ride, you know, and when not to. Everything in life has its risks. But yeah, if you ride, you are exposed. You don't have the protection that the car would give you. So, yeah, the risks are there, but that's why you must, you must provide for them. And by provide for them, I mean the things you wear when you ride, your gear. You don't, there's always an ongoing discussion. Don't make any assumptions, don't take risks. You dress for the fall, that's what they say. You have to think for everybody else on the road. The old adage of everybody else is crazy and you're the only sane person yeah. holds true every time. Okay. So don't do more than you can. Make sure your bike is in top condition. Don't drink. We try to encourage the riders telling them, look, you need to take care of the bikes. The bikes are not for speeding. Okay? They are more for enjoyment. They are more for you to have fun on them. More for you to... Um, discover the beauty of Nigeria and anywhere you ride. So it's if, if you want to speed, you want to do all the things done on the tracks, you go to the track. Highlights of the event were the stunts pulled by different bikers. <laughs> Daniel Ose, reporting for High Impact Television. Barcelona reached agreement with Bayern Munich to sign Milt Fida at Turo Vidal. Barcelona have reached an agreement with Bayern Munich to sign Chile midfielder at Turo Vidal on a three-year contract for an undisclosed fee. 31 years old Vidal will have a medical with the Spanish champions in the next few days. He joined Bayern from Juventus in 2015 and won the Bundesliga title in each of his three seasons in Germany. Barcelona will shortly inform everyone about the arrival of the player and the agenda of the presentation ceremony. Bayern later announced that Vidal has left Barcelona. Vidal, who also won a German Cup and two German Super Cup titles during three years at Bayern, thanked the club for giving him the chance to embrace a new challenge in Barcelona. That 
Muslim youth around the globe. My name is God's Time David.